Chair of Session, Honorable Minister of Industry, Narendra Joshi, Right Honorable Prime Minister Pushpa Kamal Dahal Sachanda, Honorable Former Prime Minister Sirvadar Deva, Honorable Former Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Wadi, President Mr. Jin Lee Queen, Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, Distinguished Delegates, Investors and Business Leaders, Ladies and Gentlemen. It is my pleasure and privilege to address the August gathering of investors and business leaders coming from different parts of the world. I am confident that your gracious presence will make this event grand success. After the promulgation of the Constitution, Nepal has now entered into an era of economic development. We aim to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals and become a middle-income country by 2030. Therefore, our prime agenda is high and sustainable economic growth and prosperity. We have directed our policies, regulation, resources and effort toward achieving these agendas. The government of Nepal firmly believes that the public investment alone is not sufficient to attain the growth rate that we aim for. A huge investment from the private sector, both external and internal, is needed for that. The current 14 development plan aspects nearly 70% investment from private sector. The amount, however, increased drastically when we accelerate our pace of development. Mr. Chair, we are open for any investment that is supportive to Nepal's economic development. We have a number of virgin areas for investment where the private sector investors can come without any hesitation. The government is committed to create a conducive environment for this purpose. A number of policies and legal reform initiatives are being taken to develop Nepal as an attractive destination for political investors. Laws related to foreign investment, labor industries, relation and public-private partnerships are being drafted and soon be submitted to the Legislative Parliament for its approval. In addition, the effort to simplify the procedures are underway. I am pleased to note that we have slightly improved the doing business indicators and working to make them better. We are also developing the investment friendly infrastructure. We are working hard to make 24-hour energy supply, which was one of the major hurdles for investors. Although our uh, periodic plans recognize the importance role the foreign direct investment in expanding the export base of the Nepal goods and services, we are yet to see the significant investment from the external investors. We are recently passed the sales laws which enable already constructed sales to operationalize soon. Few more sales are also being constructed. These will be a good avenue for the foreign direct investment 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 board of Nepal uh, depends determined to provide one step for service for investors. We have devised several uh, incentive packages for the infrastructure investment. I believe that I believe this will be the share to you during the sessions today and tomorrow. Further defense initiatives are being taken and we are confidence that we will get the positive results in the days to come. 
Therefore, I encourage, encourage you to come to Nepal with open mind. If you observe any obstacle, be in the legal or procedural sense, please let us know. We will try to solve, resolve them with highest priority. We have signed bilateral investment promotion and proclamation agreement as well as double taxation avoidance agreement with several countries. This not only protects your investment in Nepal but also keep the investors and is tax regime. Moreover, enough provision are there to repatriate that your investment. Mr. Chair, let me take this opportunity to brief about the public investment which is catalyzed to private investment. We have witnessed in past few years that the exception of the actual budget was slow. While we need more than 7% sustained economic growth rate to become middle income country by 2030. The average growth rate is decayed, stood at mere 4%. The major reason for this low growth rate is nothing but the low capital budget spend. Further studies show that infrastructure investment reach in Nepal is around 9% of GDP against 5% currently. I feel that this estimate is also in a lower side. We need to in invest at least 10% of GDP in infrastructure. Many of the investors are worried about the market, which I think is, is a genuine concern. Yes, Nepal is located between two large countries, economies, India and China. The market of 2.5 billion population is survival for it. The trade and transit agreement we have with our neighbors give opportunity for the export. Moreover, moreover, yes, for the bilateral framework for trade and transit, trade uh, with India, most of most of all Nepalese infrastructure produce enjoy against, uh, access to the Indian market free of the basis custom duty. This arrangement not only the provide lucrative, uh, lucrative access and rapidly growing Indian market, but also the South Asian region. I now do not need to elaborate more how Nepal is in the perfect position to tap such huge market. In order to make investors war after a war after investable infrastructure project in the Nepal, the government has created project bank. This bank service uh, serve the need of the both public and private investment. We are ready to share this from which the investors can pick the price of their project to invest. However, we welcome, welcome the investor to come up with own innovative projects for which we will facilitate maximum. Finally, I am confident that this meeting will be the good platform for you to discuss about the investment potential and opportunity in Nepal. This forum is also an opportunity for us to invite you to long-term investment in the Nepal. I once again would strongly like to encourage you to invest in Nepal. I wish Sami a grand success. Thank you.